Stand up. Fight back. Stand up. Fight back. Here in New Haven, um, we have a real strong immigrant rights movement. Yes. Yes. And New Haven is the sanctuary city. Yeah. And we should be damn proud of that. We have, right now we have, right across the street, or up the street, another block up at the church, we have the uh, Marcos Reyes, uh, who is seeking sanctuary. We'll be going up there later. I hope everyone will come up there with us. We're going to have a vigil in front of the church. Um, but right now, part of that anti-immigrant or immigrant rights movement is Unidad of Latinos in Action and they are the main part of it here in New Haven. And let's give a big round of applause to Jesus. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so first I would like to start by asking everyone to just keep one moment of silence for Heather Hayer, who passed away yesterday when she was run over by a fascist in Virginia, so if I may. Thank you. Okay, so as Norman said very kindly, um, my name is Jesus, I work with Unidad Latina en Acción, and we're a grassroots organization that is focused on immigration rights, labor rights, and bas basically human rights. I've been following what has been happening in Virginia since Friday night. We heard about it about yesterday, you know, the rally, the car, um, but Friday night's when all start. Thousands, hundreds if not thousands of uh, white supremacists marched through the city with torches saying you, you will not replace us. Who's, let's think about it, who's us? You mean white people? You mean white nationalists? Who knows? There were so many anti-immigrant chants in between, it broke my heart. However, it is very expected. We knew it was coming. We knew it was happening. It's happened before in here. On July 8th, we had a group of these same white nationalists come here. They wanted to rally right here at the green, right at that fountain. We were actually here on these very same grounds, ready to say not in New Haven, not in our town, not in our city. As all of this unfolded, one name came popping up, Augustus Invictus, who was the main person that was gonna, the main speaker here in, uh, for that event in New Haven. He was one of the main speakers also in Charlottesville. When that rally almost happened, we were faced with this question of, hey, these are alt-right, these are not Nazis, these are not the KKK. Well, I'm here just to say one more thing. Different label, same product. Yeah. I am very proud, very, very proud of all the people that came that day. Very proud of all the people that decided to put themselves on the front lines and say, we're not gonna admit, we're not gonna accept, we're not gonna welcome that kind of hatred. 
we're gonna send it out here. And just like that, they left town asking police to escort them and, ask, and saying that they will never be back. It is our duty as people to fight back against this hatred. And it is also our duty to come together and fight for our comrades. In the midst of all that chaos, four people were arrested. Two of them were not really involved with the rally. They were just, they happened to be passing by. For that reason, I'm here also to ask whoever is present from the authorities of New Haven, I'm pleading you to drop those charges because what happened that day, it was not resisting arrest. What happened that day was defending our city from racists, defending our city from white supremacists. We're right here saying we will not accept that kind of hatred. Well, and if we had let you. these people rally and recruit and grow, next thing we know is that they would have been with churches down Chapel Street. And we cannot allow that. We're not gonna accept that, not in our city, not in this sanctuary city. And if we're gonna be a sanctuary city, we better start advocating for one another. Because in this city, hate cannot win. No. So. You know. So, I just want to leave with one more message for y'all. Think about it twice when you hear these news. Think about it twice as to why people are reacting the way they do. Think about what are their motives. People of color, people that are systematically oppressed. Yes, there's times in which violence is used. Think of Ferguson, think of Baltimore. That anger comes from oppression. That anger comes from pain. That anger comes from frustration. The anger that these people showed yesterday just comes out of their tantrum, out of the violation of their status quo that allows them to step on other people. And that's not right. We need to finish it all once and for all. So thank you. Thank you very much. That was me with the Common Ground Institute. Up next, I would like to introduce a person who has been in the front lines of advocating for racial equality, not only here around... My name is Robbie Goodrich. I run an organization in Waterbury called Radical Advocates for Cross-Cultural Education. I want to talk about white supremacy tonight. Sometimes it's easy to see. We have neo-Nazis dressed up in their costumes and KKK members, and other times, White supremacy is difficult to see. White power, white nationalism, whiteness, white privilege, Eurocentrism, neoliberalism, and the predatory cultures and other institutions that are cloaked by it and fueled by a weaponized myth of white supremacy. Supremacy is not about hate, it's about power. Schools, policing, our justice systems, politics, and our economy are positioned to use the power to hate, oppress, marginalize, and strip rights and kill those who threaten to unveil the myth or live a life that disproves the myth of white supremacy without reprisal. So we need to stand up and fight back. Stand up! Let me talk to the white people. The systems of white supremacy soothe our souls and satiate our libidinal urges for safety and security. It placates our fragility into a toxic mix of masculinity and quest for profits. White supremacy kills. It keeps us blind to all about the most obvious forms of white supremacist violence. White behavioral leakage crushes liberatory efforts in our workplace in public institutions, in our homes, in our public spaces. Stand up! Fight back! Fight back. Rahman Rahim, which means in the name of God, the most greatest, the most merciful. First, I would like to thank all my brothers and sisters for, for coming here tonight. We must stand united. We must stand united against hate. This event that happened and will continue to happen, we gotta continue to oppress these oppressors. Brothers and sisters, 
These people are plotting and planning against all of us. The majority of everyone in my community are either discriminated against or go against hate crimes. And we're feeling what the black community is going through for many, many years. We've just been getting a wind of this for the last 15 years. There are folks, many folks in our community that are in fear, that are crying. And when they stand up for themselves, they're considered as terrorists. These white supremacists will continue to come and actually they're planning in a couple months to have a nationwide rally against Muslims and many others. And we got to stand up and fight back. And this person, we have to talk truth to power, even if it's the president himself of the United States of America. He, he won this election on the backs of Muslims, blacks, women, LGBT, and many other groups, immigrants, Hispanics. We need... These are the folks who should be running for office, the people that come here that really care. Yes. We really need to start mobilizing and having a plan and start running for office ourselves. Brothers and sisters, we must wake up. I'm going to end this with peace. Assalamu alaikum. And just one last thing, tomorrow in Waterbury, 6.30 to 7.30, we're going to be holding a rally similar to this at Library Park. May peace and blessings be upon you. Thank you. I don't know if you can see this sign behind me here. Mourn for the dead and fight like hell for the living. And let me just start by saying, I love New Haven. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here, for showing each other, for showing the world that hate and bigotry and discrimination and racism are not welcome here in our city. Yes. Dr. King said, let us begin. Now let us rededicate ourselves to the long and bitter but beautiful struggle for a new world. And this song starts with Winston Churchill, never, never, never give up. And the guitar is just coming and going, so you're just gonna have to bear with me. And I'm inviting you to please sing along. This is a song of love for our city and a song of freedom and a song of resistance. Never give up. Never give in. Never give up. Never give up. Let us begin. Let us begin. Let's try that out nice and loud. Never give up. Never give up. Never give in. Never give in. Never give up. Never give up. Let us begin. Let us begin. Let us stop trying. And let us do. Let us find inspiration to believe the truth. Let's turn our attention to what it means to be free. And take one step, then another, then another, till we reach eventually. Here we go, never give up. Never give up, never give in, never give in, never give up, never give up, let us begin, let us begin, let us find strength from the old railroad. Let us begin. 
Let us find shelter in each other's grace. The wheels are still turning. The house is still safe. And let me aspire in this history. Not to be better than you, to be better than me. Never give up, never give up, never give in, never give in, never give up, never give up. Let us begin, let us begin. One more time. Never give up. And never give in. Never give up. Let us begin. I'm going to be going to court tomorrow morning for being arrested on February 4th right on that corner over there for our demonstration for no ban, no law. We called for that because we've seen what's happening. We've seen what's happening, the attacks on the immigrant community. We've seen the attacks on the Muslim community coming down from the top, coming down from the Trump administration, coming down from the, part, the Department of Justice. All of these people that are in power now. And I'll just say this because I talked to Barbara this morning and she didn't want to be here because she was afraid of the police. Because when she came here the last time, she did nothing and she was arrested and she is injured. She just had to go to the hospital just recently because her, her wrist will not heal. She was afraid to come here. But she told me people think that the KKK and fascists have all gone away because they're not wearing hoods anymore. Uh, no. She said no, Norman. They're in, our they're in our courtrooms. Yeah. They're prosecutors. Yeah. They're judges. Yeah. They're law enforcement. Yeah. No KKK, no fascist USA. 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 Thank you. Um, I'm going to bring up right now, um, let's see, Gretchen, Gretchen, where are you, Gretchen? This is our dear friend, Gretchen, from Planned Parenthood. Anybody interested in helping out defend Planned Parenthood? We are out there every Saturday morning from 8 to 10 every single Saturday morning on Whitney Avenue. We were out there defending Planned Parenthood because there's a bunch of patriarchal white men that are trying to shut down that clinic. Yes. We are not going to allow them to do that. Thank you, Norm. Hi, all. My name is Gretchen Rafa, and on behalf of all of us at Planned Parenthood, we are here today to stand with people of color and allies in the face of such appalling attacks fueled by hate yesterday. We're here to stand in solidarity with people who put their lives on the line and risked everything to stand up against racism and hate in Virginia yesterday. Racism and bigotry have no place in our democracy and must be ended. We have urgent work to do to denounce and confront white supremacy in America today. 
Yesterday was not an isolated incident, and it was an explicit display of the racism that still exists in our nation, which was led by white supremacists yesterday, who came prepared for confrontation. Now, more than ever, it's our duty, and it's unacceptable to remain silent as marginalized and oppressed communities still face violence and hatred simply for standing up for the freedom, liberty, and justice they deserve. We not only condemned these actions yesterday, but we will also be committed to working relentlessly and collectively to put an end to white supremacy. At Planned Parenthood, we know that tr people achieve reproductive freedom when they can actually not only be able to access uh, health care, but when they have full autonomy over their bodies. And what that means is to be able to live... Yes. In order to have full autonomy over our bodies, we need to be able to live in communities that aren't over-policed. We need to live without the fear of being torn apart from our families. And we, lead, we need to live without fear of being discriminated against by policies putting, put in place by our government. We believe at Planned Parenthood the ability to live and thrive without fear and the ability to access health care are basic human rights. Together, Planned Parenthood is here with all of you tonight to make a promise to continue to fight to protect the lives, the health, and safety of all people in our country. We must unite against hate and bigotry and stand up for justice for all people. Thank you so much for being with us today.